Thank you very much, Karen Corla. Like others, I think our first thoughts here have to be for those who have already lost loved ones to the coronavirus in this country. And that tragedy for them, I suppose, is made all the worse because the culture we have in this country come together as a community for a funeral to support and help and carry each other through those difficult times is all the more difficult at this time in its absence. So our thoughts and prayers are with them. Thoughts are also with those who've lost a job, the hundreds of thousands, and who face a very uncertain future in terms of what comes next, not knowing particularly how long this may last or what will happen when things start to return to normal, whether that job will be there and will come back. And that certain sense of uncertainty on the timing of what we're facing here, I think also applies to those who are lonely at the moment, who are isolated at home, particularly maybe older people who particularly have to bunk, hunker down and make sure that they are protected for themselves. I think they must have a real sense of uncertainty as how long will this last. We've been able to manage the last two weeks. I think we're managing it well as a country. I think we need to give people some sense that in managing it well, actually that time will be shorter and we will come out with the other side. I think a lot of people were inspired by Mike Ryan, the executive director in the, w, in the World Health Organization, who's been leading the global response to this pan pandemic. And his advice to government, as I recall it, uh, some week or two ago was to act fast, was not to be afraid of making mistakes, but be willing to be to get ahead of the virus in everything we do and to throw everything at it without having to worry necessarily all the time, have we got all the right specific pieces in place to move. And I want to commend the government and the public service and indeed ourselves as Naroctus that that in effect is what we're doing here today for the second time, passing emergency legislation at speed, um, that may have flaws, may have mistakes, may have things that we may have to amend or change, but it's better to act fast, it's better to act with certainty. I think, in terms of our response, as I said, by and large, I think we're doing well as a country. It's impossible to do well in what's such a difficult situation. And it's hard to know exactly, because we are all self-isolating ourselves. We probably less than others, because the nature of having to come in here. But in any contact I've had at two metres distance with people, in recent weeks, my sense is that we as a people are really doubling down and doing this at scale, most of us, all of us together. And for some, maybe you have those who have feared that there are exceptions to that rule, there are people who are not obeying the social norm now. I'd maybe give some reassurance in the words that Tony Holan, our, our chief medical officer, gave to the party leaders in the consultation he gave last week, saying, is, as long as most of us are doing it, and as long as most of us are doing it most of the time, it will work. Let's not get obsessed or, uh, about some fool who maybe isn't applying the, the, the norm. Most of us are, and that gives us, I think, some confidence that we will be strong as a country and we will be, we will be good on this path of suppressing the virus, virus which we have set ourselves upon. In terms of speed, there's obviously concern that in terms of the rolling out of testing, we've done the right thing by ramping up ambition, but maybe to date have been able to match that with the speed of the testing that we need to do. I hope that that does improve, and I have confidence in our, in our public service to make that improve in the coming days. And with it, the contact tracing, and as Neil Martin, I think, as others were saying earlier on, that we'll see the benefit that we're, we're getting from that contact tracing that people are actually, we are adhering to, to, the, to the advice as a people. Um, I think, and I've been consistently saying to uh, Mr Hunan and, and any other officials, that we also need to really work on the isolation part, that there may be a lot of people who, if they have the virus, don't have easy self-isolation facilities in their own home, and we do need to provide facilities for those people. And I think we particularly have to consider those in direct provision centres or nursing homes where the capability for such isolation is particularly difficult. They should be our first priority. It's in congregations or settings where it's not easy to provide this, this isolation protection is where most of our efforts. And I was encouraged, again, Dr. William, saying that our contract tracing staff are now, as we get new volunteers coming in, the real experts in that are concentrating on those clusters where the risks are greatest. That is the right approach. I also hope and pray that that plane does come in on Sunday and we get all the PPE equipment that we, our, our frontline health officials so badly need. Uh, and I'm encouraged and hopeful that those 300 workers that is at Medtronic and Galway are looking to join the production line 
um, are now hopefully at work and turning out those ventilators, not just for us, but also for other countries. We have to do this in a collaborative way, be part of an international response. I want to pay tribute to the cleaners around this country. I was coming up the corridor here. Mandy was outside cleaning one of the uh, balustrades. That's life-saving work. That's important. That's critical to what we do. I saw it I was a shop this morning, petrol pump at the way in, and there was someone cleaning the nozzle of the... Of the it's, it's that frontline work that actually is life-saving. It's, it's that response which is going to make us strong and successful in this country as we do it. I want to particularly pay credit to the staff and the health system who are facing, we're still listening to Mr Harris and others, probably still in the calm before the real storm hits. And I think we do have to really uh, make sure that they have that PPE equipment, they have the necessary ventilators. I understand it even goes in beyond that, they have to have the oxygen, they have to have the additional beds. There are so many logistics. We still have this short few days left before the real wave of cases hit, and we need to support our staff and thank them for the work they're doing. Just as we need to move fast and heed Mike, Mike Ryan in addressing the health side, we also need to ask fast in protecting our economy. I agree with Michal that actually Mary Draghi sets the right advice, gives the advice, 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 and saying not to be too worried about being cautious here. This is a time for real Keynesian economic uh, approach, for, for, um, for massive additional borrowing to provide income support, which is what we are legislating for here today. And I'll be honest, we are legislating in the slight unknown. We don't have the full figures. I, I would love, and in terms as we ramp up, hopefully as Neuroctus in managing this crisis, I'd love to hear the Fiscal Advisory Council give us some advice in terms of, as best they can, what the mechanisms are there. <laughs> Well, I, I, expert advice in, in, in the same. Are they? Well, in the same way that we have the CMO and others, we, we do need to think about about what are the fiscal implications of what we're doing. And I say this for this reason, because as well as providing the income support which we're providing today, which is critical, we also very quickly need to start thinking about the nature of the economic recovery, the stimulus that won't be just income stimulus, it'll be investment stimulus that we need to make. And that will be an investment stimulus in the health system, as we say, Pierce, moving towards a public... You know, let's use this opportunity as move a switch to a public health service. And listen to what Paul Reid said at one of our meetings again recently. He was able to do more in a week in moving towards launch care than we might ordinarily do in a year. This is an opportunity to invest in our health system, to change it, not just in terms of, in every aspect. Tishuk, you mentioned the example of the, of the childcare system, but similarly in our healthcare system. At a time of this radical and rapid change, it's a chance for us to invest in a health system to bring it in the direction we want. And that will require investment. Similarly, if we have tens of thousands of workers and hundreds of thousands who will be out employed, we should be looking to really ramping up our public housing programme straight away as a way of lifting, as a stimulus to come out of unemployment that may come with this economic downturn. And similarly, we need to start thinking now already in terms of how we use the Green New Deal to deliver a low-carbon economy that actually strengthens our local economy, that we're not so reliant on global systems. The, all these things we need to start thinking of now, and all three of those policy objectives will require investment as well as the money we're, we're, we're committing here for the, next few, for the future in providing income support. I would like to echo what Miel Martin said as well, and Tishik, as you go into, I understand your European Council meeting on video conference this afternoon or evening, I think it's very important, as I said earlier on, that we are seen to be part of international cooperation in tackling this crisis, and actually we needed it to be a time of European solidarity, not a retreat to nationalism, not a retreat to building of borders. We had a meeting of our European Green Party leaders uh, the, yeah, yesterday, and we uh, agreed a, a joint approach, and it includes support for the concept of Eurobonds, because it is vital that uh, we don't leave countries, particularly in the southern countries, like Svetli, or other countries that are experiencing difficulty this time. And just as we need to consider the direct provision centres here at home and how we manage those cases, we also need to support to the, to the Greek government and others who've got real an ongoing refugee crisis, which is now doubling down with an additional virus problem that uh, is, is attached to that. There's a question as to what type of politics, this is the broader, bigger picture, comes out of this crisis. 
Will we see retreat away from some of the populism and nationalism which doesn't regard science, which doesn't believe in collaboration uh, in the response we make? And I think actually in this country we have a chance to be a sign that actually, yes, we believe in collaboration. We are showing it here. I believe we should continue to show it in the immediate months of this crisis by working across party together, because I think actually it will lead to a better response. We are good at this in a crisis of not dividing along party lines, but working together. I think, lastly, there are so, so many changes kind of come out of it in terms of what even we value in our daily lives, how we use tech, 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 technology. But one of the other outlying things that I hope come from this is an appreciation of our public service. I believe, and we're agreeing, agreeing emergency legislation here, and again, Mial, you said this, it is true. We underestimate, it's not seen, it's not very glamorous or whatever, but the, the ability of our public service in the public interest to act quickly sometimes in a crisis is very real. I want to commend the departments of health, Taoiseach, enterprise, finance and others who have been involved in the generation of this emergency legislation and our own team of Green Party and other deputies who have been willing to try to do what we can to make it better. We will support it. We will try and suggest amendments. We will be stronger together. Thank you, Cancor. Thank you very much, Deputy Ryan.